What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, coming at you today with another episode of Does It Suck? The show where we take a deep dive look at a new game and see what's good or bad about it. This time we're going to be checking out the newly introduced beta for Warhammer, Chaos Bane. Now this game is very, very interesting to me personally because I'm somebody who is absolutely addicted to Diablo. Something about top-down combat and getting to explore different dungeons, finding loot and teaming up with your friends is so endlessly replayable to me. So I I actually decided to basically investigate this to see if it's worth the hype or if this is just some weird little knockoff. And so this beta is, in my opinion, a very, very good taste of what I hope is going to be bigger and better stuff later on. So probably you've never heard of this game because I know I hadn't. I mean, I'll just say right up front, very honestly, I've never really tried a Warhammer game. I'm kind of aware of what they are and what the universe is, but I just never really picked one up for some reason. So going into Chaos Bane, I was completely blind. But apparently, it seems like this is all based on a giant freaking universe of crazy eternal wars between demons and kingdoms and all the typical cool fantasy stuff we like. In this though, what's really kind of unique about this is that whereas when you're playing a Diablo, you kind of get a chance to customize your character a tiny bit and name them, that here is not the case. There are actually four separate people you can play as who have their own backstory, their own motivations. They are actually people in this universe that were taking the role of. Of. Now, I actually only played as two of the four simply because they sort of, well, two of them didn't really draw my attention. So I wanted to try out the warrior for a bit, and then I decided to pick up the wood elf archer. Now, let me just say, the elf rocks. I mean, holy heck, I spent a majority of my hours, probably 95% of my time, was just playing as the wood elf because she is a mighty monster. Her abilities are obviously all based around being able to fire arrows, drop traps, and summon minions, but what's really, really kind of alluring to this is the combat itself. So in any of these dungeon crawlers, you're going to be repeating stuff a lot. You're going into these dungeons and trying to beat them over and over again to find the coolest loot possible, obviously, right? Well, in these fights, it sort of struck me about the fact that there's sort of this air of the fact that Chaos Bane is trying to be a more hardcore version of Diablo, because these fights, some of them actually are relatively tough. Like, when I was playing, the main boss I fought was this giant demon of pestilence and filth and disgustingness. And what I noticed about him was that he has very, very clear attack cycles that can poison the arena. He can actually destroy the hiding spots. So when you're trying to hide from his vomit, it can actually still poison you if you're not careful. And he has different sword strikes. And I think that it's all pretty cool because this fight was actually a little bit tough. When I played it as my warrior, I got eradicated very very badly but I like that I like a game that really sort of basically says okay here's the ground rules here's how you can play your character and by the way here's a dude who sort of breaks the rules to teach you to get better now something else about this that's really really cool to me is that there is actually a crazy amount of customization in this in a way that I don't really see in games so typically you have well so, sort of requirements to stuff basically you can tell that the creators want you to play the character a certain way. They're basically trying to, to well, sort of influence you, whether consciously or unconsciously. Usually by, you know, if you're trying to get somebody to shoot a lot, typically you'll put the shooting buttons on the triggers. Stuff like that is basically made to sort of sway your decisions subconsciously. Well, this actually allows for full customization. You can put all your different abilities on different buttons. You can go into the talent trees and actually affect the power of different skills so really you can just basically really tinker with the the real detail specific parts of this i believe that warhammer is actually based on a very very uh it's like a tabletop game that is ultra ultra technical and i think that they're trying to convey that in this by basically giving you lots and lots of different weapons and ways to customize stuff and then basically saying okay you figure it out they don't actually ever even give you a tutorial on this but that's actually what i enjoyed about it 
once. I'll be honest, never once in this entire freaking beta did I find myself getting confused. It's one of those things where as soon as I dropped in, yeah, there was a lot to learn, but everything in front of you is so straightforward and so customizable that I didn't actually ask how I could do it. Instead, I tried to figure out how to do it, and I like that. It was so cool, especially when certain scenarios just basically required me figure stuff out immediately. Like, one of my favorite abilities that my Wood Elf has is these special magical knives that I can throw and will actually circle my body like tiny planets orbiting me, and I noticed that I couldn't just throw one at once. If I wanted, I could actually show like 20 of them at once. So I could make a literal cyclone of freaking blades hover around my body, basically making it where if I was feeling brave enough to throw myself into a particularly dangerous situation and stand in the middle of a crowd of demons, I could shred these freaking things like a blender of chaos. And I like that. It is so freaking epic. But with the good, I do have to say that there's some stuff in this that does kind of take me aback, and I guess it's something that I'll probably get used to in time, but the biggest thing that really kind of threw me for a loop is the fact that there is not a typical party system in this. It's possible to join other players and there is online co-op, but what's weird is that it doesn't seem like you actually join a party in the typical sense. Okay, yes, you're actually running around with these people and they're helping you stay alive, but at no point do you ever actually see their health bar or anything like that. It seems like you're basically two solo adventures who just happen to be walking in the same direction. And personally, I don't care for that kind of stuff. I actually searched around in the menus and I could not find a specific way to actually invite somebody in the customary sense. Instead, I just kind of had to hope that people would walk in my way. And since nobody seemed to be using a microphone, I couldn't even ask them, hey, do you want to party up? Or, hey, let's go check out this crypt and go save some freaking guards that got captured by poison demons. It's just a little bit aggravating because I'm somebody who loves co-op and only plays these games for the ability to socialize. I like being able to like grab random subscribers and play with them or my real life friends. So that to me is a bit of a drawback. The other thing is I did run into some very peculiar glitches from time to time, but the biggest one being that as people join you and then leave, sometimes it can actually screw up up how the quests work because it seems like everything actually rebalances depending on how many people show up. So if uh, there's just one of you, there's going to be like 15 enemies, but if there's two of you, maybe there will be 25 enemies. And if somebody leaves in the middle of a dungeon, it says like so and so has logged out. And then when you leave the dungeon, sometimes it will actually break the quest. I actually seriously had that happen a couple times. Like right here, I do not have a quest marker. It's actually telling me to go back and to this dungeon that I had just completed because it unnecessarily thinks I never started it. I ended up having to leave the game, completely close the program, and boot it back up in order to fix this error. Stuff like this is not a humongous drawback. It's definitely not something that's destroying the universe or anything. It's just tiny gripes that I hope get fixed. This is coming out in a couple months, and it is cool that the beta actually has all four of the characters in it. I'm probably going to get this, and I'm probably going to review it just because I am super, super into Diablo, but I will admit that I'm a little bit worried about it. I think it's cool that you can turn up the difficulty to get more experience points. I think the story itself is pretty radical and sort of super dark the way I think a lot of these good RPGs are. I'm just hoping that it stays fun throughout the entire thing. I mean, even as I was playing this, after I started maxing out my ability trees, I started to feel like things could become a little bit repetitive in a way that Diablo 3 manages to avoid by having such interesting quests in it. Proper universe building is definitely one of the biggest hurdles of online games like this because they need to try and get you established and interested in it. And I feel like Warhammer is definitely beginning to lay the groundwork for it. I mean, I'll say that while I'm not personally fully invested in it yet, I can see what they're trying to do and I'm definitely on board for it. I'm excited for what it possibly could be, even if I feel like this beta is a little bit of a weird taste. I'm excited though, and I feel like that's what's important. I feel like a game like this just doesn't come along very often, so I'm happy to try and support it, at least with an open mind, to see just what it could possibly be in the long run. But what do you think of it? Have you gotten a chance to try this beta? Are you somebody who's super, super into Warhammer? And maybe you can actually yell at me in the comments about how I've never tried this franchise before. But either way, you guys absolutely rock. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming.
If I do end up buying this game, I'll probably do some special night at some point where I actually grab a bunch of subscribers and we all team up and just see how strong of an army we can build. And then if somebody's not leveled up, we can all chuckle as they get killed by demons over and over again. Sound good? Okay, good.